driving up to Southwood and Ferries in Essex just to do a men's breakfast. Um, apart from the fact it's a, a bit of an egg and bacon, um, I was just thinking of why it's so important to me as men. The Bible tells us we're in a battle. Um, as men, we need to meet together to fight this battle. We battle against principalities and powers. We know the devil wants to come and kill, still destroy. So why is it crucial men meet together? We're in a battle together, guys. We have to meet, we have to fellowship, we have to build each other up, we have to pray for each other, we have to fight the good fight of faith, we have to put on the armor of God, we have to take up the sword of the spirit, we have to make our stand for the Lord Jesus Christ. So we need to stimulate each other, build each other up. I just talk about sport and, 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 and the car or whatever it might be. Have conversations about the things of God. Pray for each other, minister to each other. I want to encourage you guys, you must meet, you must meet together in, in your church, men's events, you must meet together in conferences, get together as men, uh, fellowship with each other, uh, get out and witness and share the gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, act like Christian men, be quick and strong like Christian men, so be courageous guys, uh, I'm going to show you a little clip or two of this morning and uh, encourage you to run breakfasts and, and, and dinners, curry nights, get your men uh, seeking the Lord why he may be found so uh, I'll, I'll touch base with you later and God bless the pages of the new recorder and the headlines went something like this an egg knows my head driving to work with guns and knives and bats uh, I was in a total darkness I was sitting in my car one night with seven year prison sentence hanging over my head we just had a round just dross anyway it's not worth anything really when I look back bodybuilding titles and trophies steroids needles the door, all that stuff. What a nonsense, what a madness. I've got something so important. It's the gift of eternal life. It's the relationship with Jesus Christ. That he took my sin and my shame. He died upon the cross that I may be, have a relationship with him. Guys, let's finish with a quick prayer. I've had the privilege of sharing my story many, many times. And it is a privilege to be here today. And I want to draw our hearts close to him for a moment. I want you to think and reflect on your own life. Because the Bible says all have fallen short of the glory and the standards of God. The wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life. I am a gentleman, I'm a fruitcake, I'm a madman with nothing better to do than lie to you today. Get out of my bed, drive here and lie to you. Or the truth of my life is the truth of the gospel that I'm a witness of the resurrection. If the resurrection is real, there's a reason to live that far outweighs politics, sport, or anything else. The purpose of life is to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, to enjoy God forever. I believe the Bible says that we are cold in our hearts, we don't know him because of our iniquities. Our iniquities are separated between, from us and our God. But the blood of Jesus Christ has sprinkled into our hearts by the eternal spirit and cleansed us that we may have eternal life. The Bible tells us that all have gone away and our ways are different from his ways. Jesus said, even calling your brother a fool, you're in danger of hellfire. When I read that, I read that Jesus said, having lust in your heart is like committing adultery. Having anger in your heart is like murder. I'm thinking, how serious are these standards of God? We're all in a mess. The world's in a mess. But what is impossible with us, gentlemen, is possible with God. I don't believe it's just a prayer. I believe it's more than a prayer. But I believe a prayer is a good place to start. Now I'm going to pray a prayer. Maybe you've gone away from God. Maybe you're investigating this. You're not sure about what's going on. Maybe it's one of the first times you've ever heard the gospel message. Who knows? Backslidden. Unbelief creeps in. Doubts flooding our lives. Things go wrong when we think we have God, where are you? It's more than just an answered prayer or an unanswered prayer. It's about the resurrection, gentlemen. Do you know him? Have you trusted him? Have you made him Lord of your life? Pray this prayer out loud after me. If you're a Christian here, pray out loud. The Bible says if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, Believe in our heart, God raised him from the dead, we should be saved. Pray this out after me. Even if it's the first time and you want to make this your prayer, pray it out, believe it in your heart. A 
and that he will say amen. Heavenly Father, <laughs> we thank you for Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, who died upon the cross, paid the price for our sins, and rose again from the dead. We welcome your Holy Spirit into our hearts. Forgive us of what we do wrong. We repent and trust in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Guys, keep your heads bowed, eyes closed. I'm not going to embarrass anyone here or call them up or anything like that. Right?